Hello, we are the Autonomous Flying Robots team. Our goal is to create an inexpensive, open source, autonomous flying drone. While our drone is not as sophisticated or as accurate as some technologies coming out of MIT and other institutions, it can navigate rooms and hallways for a cost of around $300. Compare this to the other technologies, where just the sensors alone can cost over $8,000. The flying robot prototype consists of four main components, five ultrasonic distance sensors, an Arduino Micro, the Parrot AR drone, and a control laptop. The Arduino Micro gets distance data from all five distance sensors about every 300 milliseconds. The distance data is then converted into JSON and relayed to the drone over USB serial, which the drone relays to the laptop using UDP packets on the drone's Wi-Fi network. A Node.js control algorithm running on the laptop analyzes the data and sends control commands back to the drone. One of the first issues we encountered was controlling the drone. We started with an open source library, but had difficulty getting it to work well. After some experimenting, we determined that the library was trying to do too much, including estimating its position, and it was getting confused in a moving environment. We did a bit more searching, and we found a simpler library that gave us raw controls that we needed. Connecting the Arduino to the AR drone proved more troublesome than expected. We found some instructions online, but they suggested to hack into the drone's hardware and software. There had to be a better way. Since the drone has a working USB host port, we thought that perhaps we could use that. After some investigation and hard work, we created a CDC driver and loaded it onto the AR drone. We then hacked all of our sensors onto a toilet paper roll and mounted it, as well as the Arduino Mega, on top of the drone. We also experimented with adding LED lights. Now with a flying drone, we quickly realized that the drone is very sensitive to weight. At the time, we only had three sensors on the drone, and it was becoming apparent that we needed two more sensors. We had to drop the weight down. We swapped out the relatively heavy Arduino Mega, which was 35 grams, to the much lighter Arduino Micro, which was at 6 grams. We also removed the LEDs, all extraneous stickers, plastic panels, and even plastic casing from the USB cable connector. While not perfect, the drone was now stable in the air. Initial trials of autonomy algorithms showed us that our sensor data was too erratic and slow for the response that we wanted from the autonomy code. Initially, we thought this problem could be solved with filtering. However, after a bit of trial and error, we determined that the issue was with software readings themselves. So, after studying the ultrasonic sensor datasheet, we were able to tune the sensor driver on the Arduino to give fast, clean distance measurements for each of the sensors. Now for the fun stuff. The autonomy portion proved challenging. Though we chose a relatively simple state machine for drone decisions, we found ourselves working out dynamic flight issues. The drone would start to drift if it was commanded to move quickly. We solved this by giving counterbalance commands. The state machine uses thresholds to detect objects. If any of the sensors read below the threshold, we would consider it an object. The drone then made a decision based on its current state and the state of each of the sensors. Initial tests were interesting, as sometimes it would go into an infinite rotating loop. This was caused by bad sensor readings combined with the drone drift. After we got it to safely navigate an open room, we began to fix corner cases. Literally. Our drone was having trouble in corners. Another problem was flying through hallways. We wanted our drone to safely navigate through a hallway, but because of our algorithm, it detected the wall as too close and tried to fly away from it, into another wall. We changed the code so it would detect these walls using left and right sensors and fly through them accordingly. However, we still had issues of flying into walls exactly on its right and left, so we added two more sensors to better detect these walls. For the final professional touch, we ditched the toilet paper roll for a 3D printed sensor tower. Though the tower was slightly heavier, it allowed for cleaner wiring and a better looking finished product. 